everyone, Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the second half of August and the new moon that we have coming up in Leo on the 18th or 19th, depending on where in the world you live. Now, this is a very powerful and dynamic month, but frankly, <laughs> for the rest of this year, it's a very powerful and dynamic period. We do, within this context, have a peak in the middle of the month. And it really starts on the, the 13th of the month because we have Mars coming exactly, Mars in Aries, exactly square to Pluto in Capricorn at 23 of Aries Capricorn. That's on the 13th, as I say. And this is really a clash between Mars in Aries representing the power of the individual in that square clashing with the power and control of the government, leaders, etc. So that's going to be a kind of might makes right aspect. It's quite combative as well, very strong. Both are to do with force, Mars in Aries particularly and Pluto in Capricorn. So that's on the that's on the 13th of the month. Then on the 15th, we have Uranus becoming stationary retrograde. Now, whenever a planet goes changes direction, these very slow moving planets kind of drill down on one particular degree and then grind to a halt before they start moving very slowly again. So in fact, um, it isn't just the day itself of the 15th where that symbolism of the planet is magnified, in this case Uranus, but the few days to either side of that. So this is going to be strong Uranian energy. So think of all the associations with, with Uranus. It's a, it's a very sudden, eruptive energy. It's not smooth. It's not, not linear. It's very connected to earthquakes, volcanoes, extreme earth events. It's connected to political earthquakes. It's connected to any kind of extreme weather event. It can even be tsunamis, that kind of thing. It's also connected to disclosure because it's to do with truth the piercing sword of clarity. So very often we can get disclosures around this time as well. It's to do with anything to do with the internet, cut internet cutouts, cyber attacks, that kind of thing. It's to do with anything galactic. Both Uranus and the sign it rules, Aquarius, of, of a most connected planet and sign to the galactic. So we may be getting some galactic news at this time. But it's a, an eruptive, powerful energy that we're going to feel in the middle of the month. And to either side of that at the same time, from the um, really running into that from the 16th to the 19th, we have Mars in Aries coming exactly conjunct Eris in Aries to 24 of Aries. Now, this is going to happen repeatedly. As I said, as we move through the next few months, Mars is going to be moving through Aries, repeatedly coming to conjunct Eris, and repeatedly squaring those planets in Capricorn, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. And so we're going to be feeling these kind of waves very intensely, but when they come together in exactitude, we feel them even more strongly. So Mars will energize Eris. So Eris, goddess of discord and chaos, when people don't feel heard, they feel slighted, they take to the streets. We are seeing this all over. We're seeing this in America. We've seen it strongly in Hong Kong. There was a huge protest just the other day in Berlin. Whatever the subject, it's really the run up in that square to Pluto in Capricorn around government laws or government policies or government control. But but remember that Eris is also the female awakener. So Mars is adding energy to that principle of female awakening. And remember, Uranus is also the planet of awakening. So that is magnified as Uranus becomes stationary retrograde. So we could well be seeing people awakening at this time because they're hearing the disclosure. And by the way, the disclosure can be about many things. It can be around corruption. It can be around long-held secrets, Pluto, particularly rich and powerful people, Pluto. It can be around galactic events. It can be any or all of those. But the, the information may make people more angry, and that will energize Mars with Eris 
to take to the streets and, and protest about people discovering this new truth. Whatever the subject is, it doesn't really matter. The symbolism still holds. So potentially a strong period of awakening at this time too. The 17th of the month in the middle of this is going to be a very strong day too. Pluto comes to semi-square Ceres. Ceres is um, the goddess of agriculture and harvest. Now, when we have that very tight, con exact conjunction between Saturn and Pluto at 22 Capricorn in January, Ceres was part of that very tight conjunction, which was why um, several astrologers, myself included, were talking about a possible shortage, uh, disruption in food supply, shortage of food as we move through 2020, because Ceres was conjunct Saturn, limitation, constriction. So whether we're thinking about the locust plagues in India, Africa, South America, whether we're thinking about extreme earth events, climate change, whether we're thinking about disruptions with Brexit, whatever we're thinking about, there could be issues that cause shortages of food and disruptions in the food supply. So please plan accordingly. Plan accordingly as we go through these coming months. That isn't to make you panic. You can do it quite quite gradually, but make sure that you have kind of long dated food in the house, just to be sure, just to be sure that um, you're okay through that period. Now, the same day on the 17th, it's going to be a strong day, the moon squares Uranus. This can be quite quite shocking things coming to the fore, some shocking truth happening at the same time that um, causes some of this. It also will be some kind of echo very likely of what was happening in January because on that same day again, Pluto retrogrades to 22 degrees of Capricorn. That degree again, now it doesn't reach exactly 22 degrees and 46 minutes where it was on the 12th of January with, with Saturn. It does that on the 30th of August, end of the month. But nevertheless, even on the 17th, we may see some repeat or echoes or developments from whatever was happening for us individually and collectively in January. And that was really the beginning of the whole um, virus explosion. So that's on the 17th. So very strong time, really. And we are going through this enormous time of transition and transformation. We're all very aware that the the past is gone. The past as we've known it is, we're not going to know that again in our lifetimes because the, the foundations and the structures are cracking and crumbling. Many of them have been really very seriously rattled and will continue to be so as we move through these coming months. Uranus um, itself stationary retrograde on the, on the 15th. That's another shake up. We've got a We've got to shake things up and break things down in order to create the new. So you may well feel suspended between two worlds as the past is gone, but we are still in our creator's cave, as it were, creating the new. And remember, in every moment of conscious time, you are creating whether you are aware of it or not. So try and... Um, be aware, try and, try and aim at a higher goal of unity consciousness. Because Mars in Aries, very much the lower expression, can be a kind of um, gut reaction, um, very quick trigger response. It can be impulsive, overreactive, aggressive. Yes, it can be all of those things, but when we are in that mode and our energy can become very scattered and reactive to outer events, we really are giving away our power to the outer circumstances, the outer people, the outer, outer circumstances that are triggering us. And we're, we're really being in kind of victim mode then. So if you can become aware of that and pull that energy inwards, that Mars in Aries energy, so it can become your courage, your inner power, your calm composure, whatever the circumstances, and your hero energy. And then we're using that Mars in Aries energy really, really well. And try and go beyond the, the duality 
the polarity. Try and go beyond that because for hundreds and thousands of years we have had arguments, divisions, wars, black against white, good against bad, right against wrong, whatever the the subject is doesn't really matter. And so this is such an opportunity for us energetically because we're so much more aware now to change that whole pattern of thousands of years. We can now start to shift towards a goal of unity consciousness. And remember what I said in the last video about this sense of a global superorganism, that we are immensely more powerful when we come together as a global community, and that's absolutely the symbolism of Aquarius. It isn't just about one human, one person, it's about humanity as a whole. So at its best, that's where we're headed. Okay, so let us talk about the new moon now. So the new moon happens on the 18th of the month. It happens at 26 degrees and 35 minutes of Leo. It's exact at 741 p.m. Pacific and 3.41 a.m. UK time the next day, the 19th. So see where 26 of Leo falls in your chart. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can download a free birth chart from my website and go to this, this link above um, and that will take you to my store. You can buy a two-part tutorial video series and that will explain really from zero, very, very simply, how you can find these degrees and points in your chart for every update I ever do to infinity to discover what new moons, full moons, eclipses, whatever I'm talking about, where they fall in your chart and what that means for you. People are just really loving these because it starts you on your astrological journey. So check those out. But the new moon is always a perfect time to set a new intention. So wherever it's falling in your chart, set a new intention for what you want to manifest in your life. And remember, you're just planting the seed at this point. And very often when we have a new moon in a sign, as we do here in Leo, round about six months down the road, there'll be a full moon in Leo. And you can look back and say, OK, have I manifested the seed I planted at the new moon? And that's a really lovely way to start to become more aware of the astrological patterns in your life and start to live with deeper meaning. So at this new moon, it is, again, also powerful and dynamic. It's a very strong new moon. And if we include... Eris, dwarf planet Eris, and Chiron as well, not strictly planets. If we include them, nevertheless, we have six orbiting planetary um, uh, objects, if you like, let's call them that, in cardinal signs and six in fire. So this is strong outward yang energy. So at this new moon, we have Mars conjunct Eris, remember, very, very tightly here. So Mars is pouring energy into Eris. It's also, they're both squaring the Capricorn planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. So symbolism is, as I've described, and particularly think of Mars in Aries as um, symbolism. If people have Mars in Aries, as I do, very much a believer in freedom and in independence, making your own decisions. The square to the Capricorn planets is about no there is governmental or state control over that. You, you can't, you're not fully free, apparently, to make all of those decisions. And sometimes Pluto can be kind of invisible government. You can't kind of easily reach it in some way. Jupiter conjunct Saturn Pluto may suggest that uh, the control and power of governments is being expanded at the moment, maybe because of people taking to the streets more. We'll see how that manifests. But also there's this stronger sense of contr external control coming in because the sun and moon in Leo are really exactly quincunx Saturn. Saturn, they're within three minutes of a degree of an exact quincunx to Saturn. Saturn is in its own sign of Capricorn. So a greater sense of control, external control coming in. But actually... What is hopeful in this, with this, this breakdown of the old, we actually have a T-square here. Because Mars and Eris and Aries, square in the Capricorn planets, but Mars and, Aries, Mars and Eris and Aries are actually opposing Homer. 
that wonderful dwarf planet linked to the Hawaiian goddess of fertility. Symbolism is so abundant and fertile. She's able to birth children from various parts of her body. She can regenerate herself to a young maiden. She can regenerate the land. She can produce food from barren land. She can produce food from the seas. So think, this is, this is the birth of the new, the regeneration of something. That's the promise of Homia, together with the collapse of the old. So it isn't all gloom and doom. We're, we're moving towards the new. We also really have a grand trine in fire here because we have the sun and moon in Leo, 26 of Leo, trine to Mars and Eris at 24 of Eris, of Aries, Mars and, <laughs> Mars and, and Eris in 24, at 24 of Aries. They are both trine to the south node at 26 of Sagittarius, which is conjunct the galactic center. The galactic center is about creator energy. It's raw creator energy for us to use. And Leo is the sign of creativity. So this is an, an incredibly creative new moon that we have, beautiful in that sense. So this is very positive. It feels, again, powerful. It feels passionate and it feels empowered. There's a sense of optimism here with this grand trine in fire. To, you know, moving inwards in our creator's cave, if you like, to release that creative energy to produce something new. Leo is also one of the signs associated with leadership. So is Mars in Aries. And it's very interesting at this new moon that the sun and moon and Mercury are tightly conjunct to the fixed royal star Regulus, which is the star of kingship or leadership. So we have a strong theme here of leadership. So we may be looking at our leaders in the world and saying, how do we feel about them? Are they good leaders? And by the way, what is good leadership? Anyway, we may be having a debate about that. But I think this is also a call for us to say, can we all be leaders in our lives, whatever our title is, whatever our job is, because this isn't leadership in terms of telling other people what to do, that sense of command, but it's it's having an immaculate morality, if you like, setting very high standards for yourself, having courage, and, uh, and really feeling that you are... Uh, that you are always in right action, let's say that, always setting standards for yourself, not setting standards for other people, setting them for yourself in right action in all that you do. A strong sense of integrity here. So leadership, a really big deal here. Now, Leo, as I'm sure you know, is also related to heart energy. And Many of you will have heard of the HeartMath Institute, a very highly respected organization in America that, is, that has spent many years researching the heart and the science of the heart as well. And they have a lot of evidence. You can go to the HeartMath um, website for this. But they now know that the heart has a huge energy field. Its amplitude is 60 times greater than that of the brain. So the heart sends more information to the brain than the brain does to the heart. And when we are in negative emotion, whether it's fear, anxiety, panic, anger, whatever that is, the heart rhythms tend to become incoherent. And because the heart is sending information to the brain, but also to our entire physiology, all of our physical rhythms tend to become incoherent as well, which isn't a healthy place to be. It doesn't promote good health. But if we can shift towards coherent energy, and all of that is really, our, they are feelings of gratitude, appreciation, compassion, and love. And as soon as we start to feel those, our heart rhythms start to become more coherent, more rhythmic. That expands our heart fields. The heart, as I say, sends all of that information to the brain, so the brain's heart field becomes more coherent. And the heart sends that coherence to every single cell in your body. 
So this promotes health. And in addition, that is what you're broadcasting to the world. And we know that we catch each other's energy. It's infectious, like we catch a cold. I'm not going to talk about COVID today, but like we catch a cold, it's infectious. We broadcast it. And our heart field, as I say, is much, much bigger. So if we can do this, then we will be helping the entire collective. Now, if lots of us do it across the world, then we are, will really be on a roll to do this. Now, the HeartMath Institute has also said that the heart plays a major role in our intuitive knowing, what they call our intuitive knowing. And what they say, and this is a quote from HeartMath, is the role of the heart in our in our intuition is connected to the heart being able to access a field of information beyond space-time. Wow. The role of the heart in our intuition is to do the heart being able to access a field of information beyond space-time. That sounds very exciting to me. <laughs> so, how do we get to this state of coherence? Well, it's really incredibly simple. It's the, it's the thing that I've written about in my last book that I've talked about endlessly in my videos, written about in my newsletters. It's just turning inwards and imagining that you're breathing in and out through your heart as if it was your lung, not forcing anything, just relaxing into it. And very quickly, your breathing will slow and deepen and if you can hold any, any of the four emotions, gratitude, appreciation, compassion, or love for anyone or anything in your life, anything, blue sky, clean water, anything, you will start to create within moments, really, <clears throat> more coherence in all of your physical, um, all of your physical systems your heart, your brain, the cells in your body. <coughs> Excuse me. So, this is all for free, at home, don't have to learn any more than that or go anywhere. We can all do this and we will be really creating um, better health for ourselves. And it can be really that easy. So I'd really, really encourage you to do that breath work as often as you can through the day, at least once, several times a day, just take a few moments, that's all you need to do. So I'd just like to briefly talk about one of the projects of HeartMath called the Global Coherence Initiative. I actually wrote about this in my first book. This has been going for quite some years and I'd just like to read their, their mission statement really because I think it's very inspiring for us all and it is this. To unite millions of people worldwide in heart-focused care and intention to help shift global consciousness from instability and discord to balance, cooperation and enduring peace. So I think most of us would agree with that. Most of us would agree to pulling in a better world on those principles. So, with Leo, we talk about letting our heart, letting our light shine. People have strong heart energy, coherent heart energy, light, let their light shine. And remember that we are, each of us, although we have this illusion of solidity, we are a tiny percent of solid matter. We are, we are gravitationally organized bodies of light. We are vibrating energy. And we're all aware that when we see people who meditate a lot, often it's spiritual leaders, they have a radiance that's palpable. So we are in a very good position at the moment in that the Earth is moving through the photon belt. Photons are light, more information. The Earth is receiving more cosmic and galactic energies, I've mentioned many times. So we are upgrading, like we are getting more light into our bodies and into our cells. So really use this opportunity to aim for unity consciousness, to create heart coherence, to let our light shine, and to move forwards with one heart and one mind as a global super organism towards a better world. 
Now, yes, it is going to be incredibly bumpy and lumpy in 3D reality. In the outer world, there are going to be a lot of fast-moving external events over the next few months. I think there's no doubt about it. But it depends where we put our focus. We can focus on that and watch the news every night and get kind of crazier with, with panic and fear and anger. Or we can say, no, I'm going to actually walk my talk. I'm going to use the, what has been up to now an abstract spiritual practice in my, and I'm, in my life, and I'm really going to put it into practice. Because these next few months, which are very intense, I believe represent a rare evolutionary portal for us of accelerated evolution for humanity. So it's not going to last. Of course, we can always evolve. But this is a very particular opportunity because the rougher it gets on the outside, the greater the opportunity to shift on the inside. So really turn your focus inwards, develop your mastery, and really focus on bringing a better world into being, letting your light shine. And at this new moon in Leo, can you develop a new understanding of the heart and of love, the science of the heart? Can you set a new intention for doing that in your life? And can you actually become a trailblazer for love in the world, in all aspects of your daily life? Can you rise above the polarity and become a trailblazer for love? Because this new moon in Leo, symbolically, archetypally, is our opportunity to do that. And the speed at which we pull a better world towards us is a barometer of how well we're doing that globally. Now, the energy for sure is going to shift in December when Jupiter and Saturn move out of Capricorn finally and into Aquarius. So it will be, you'll feel a shift with less density. How that manifests in our world is down to us. It's down to us, our mastery, our frequency, and our focus. So I really hope this has helped you. I try and expand beyond just the pure astrology and bring in more tools in the toolkit that I hope will help you in your life. So if you'd like more information about my books, my teaching videos, my ever so long monthly newsletter, I go into much more detail. It comes out on the last day of each month and um, I just cover a lot of things I, I, I couldn't possibly cover in, in the videos. So if you're interested in that, just go to pamgregory.com and uh, I hope that will be of interest for you. But in the meantime, have a spectacular, heart-based, passionate, empowered, focused new moon in Leo. God bless. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now. Thank you.